Hello and welcome to uh, Wally Bois. And we have made an executive decision, as you can see, he's thinking deeply about it, uh, that we require an insert for the radial arm saw. Now, this top here, you see, is all chipboard and what have you, all right? And the slot that was in it is completely out of the bucket. So I thought to myself, I oh, know, let's make an insert to go in this top. Now I started doing it, I actually started making the video, and I realised I hadn't turned the microphone off, which is a pretty stupid thing to do, wouldn't you say? Anyway, we're going to be using this piece of chestnut here for the insert, which is about 10 millimetres thick. The chipboard itself is about, on this top here, is about 19 millimetres thick. And why am I doing it? Why don't you have a big slot? Well, the slot is actually really important on a radial arm saw or any saw. It creates the zero clearance, and also when you're cross-cutting, it prevents chipping or helps to prevent chipping now I did buy some of that tape mm -hmm. you know that tape you can get that is well something you put on your slot <laughs> right and you cut through it and apparently it stops breakout and stuff no it doesn't it doesn't work and I'm talking about the tape you put on top of your actual table saw or chop saw on top of the actual slot itself I don't know what I done with it now it's three years ago I bought that stuff and that's through recommendation of some not actually no, it was this year it was last year the last year and um, that was from a recommendation um, by an online by a YouTuber, uh, I think it's 731 Woodworks. And it's, it's rubbish, don't buy it. If you, if you see any of this zero clearance tape, it's a waste of time and money. You need an actual proper zero clearance insert, it's what you need. And if you replace it regular, you'll get a lot less breakout as well. And that's why I want one on this saw. Now if you put a zero clearance insert into your table saw, well then you might be doing so little thin bits of wood don't end up going down the side the blade and getting all jammed up and stuff. But in this case I want it to help prevent breakout, you know, chipping on the back edge of the cut. Right, so what I've done is I've clamped two pieces of wood to the top here as you can see just there, right. I used two scraps like this, right, either side um, of the actual uh, router base to provide the width that I wanted. So it's going to be the width of this plus the width of a cutter. So that is going to be the width. It's probably about 50 odd mil. I'm not bothered what, what width it is. No, it doesn't matter. If it's 50 mil, 52 mil, 51 mil, 6 mil, it doesn't matter. As long as I can cut a piece of wood to fit the slot. And that's what I'm going to do. So let's bring you back a little bit. Now I've started doing it, like I say, uh, because, you know, I made a mistake. <laughs> as you do. <laughs> and also, I was using the uh, my pattern cutter, which is a really bad idea, because this is a good pattern cutter, and I'm going to absolutely wreck it um, trying to um, route a chipboard. Chipboard, as you probably know, is full of crap. It's not just wooden chips. It would have bits of grit in there, bits of metal in there, have bits of plastic in there. And obviously, the metal and the grit is not very good for your blades. No. So, I decided to swap it over a cheap ass nasty bit. So what I've got to do is I've got to carry on creating this slot or rabbit or whatever, insert or you know, whatever I call it in this top. Some of it might have to be chisel work or other machines I might have to use to get in there. Maybe I'll use the fine multi-tool or something just to cut out the rest there and chisel that out. Um, I can come right up to the edge here which is what I was going to do right to there and that way I'll have something to um, fix it to as well. Could even come right through actually come to that. That's another option, maybe. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Anyway, I'm going to carry on doing it. All right, we're going to carry on chopping that out, and then we'll get to the next stage and put the insert in, hopefully.
So far, so good. Feels quite good so far. You can see it, just about see that. I'll be taking these out of the way in a moment so you have a better look. This little hammer, I'm going to get that back edge a little bit. Get, I suppose what I could do, if I unscrew, is remove that handle because that handle's hitting the back fence. So I might be able to get a little bit further if I remove the handle. Hello, Wally. You don't like the noise, do you, boy? But you're waiting patiently for a treat. That's what I reckon your problem is. He needs a treat, don't you, Wally? Da -da 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 -da. Are you going to work for it, though? Hey, eh? Wally, are you going to do, do me a trick? Right. Now, Wally. Turn around. That was pretty unenergetic. Oh, that'll do, though. Right. Can I pull? Pull. Pull. You're just sniffing my hand, Paul. You're being very lazy. Will it roll over? No, you roll over. Oh, he's getting old boy in, doing what he's supposed to do. He's not a performing seal. Not anymore. No, are you, Wally? No. <laughs> so, maybe I can get a little bit further. Do you want to blow some of this dust out of the way? Don't breathe it in if you can help it. I don't even see that there. Bring it a bit closer. See, the slot is coming along nicely now. But I need to get that little bit extra. Right. Hope I can get away with not editing this video. I know it'll be a bit on the long side, but you can always skip through it, can't you? Right, so should we get a bit closer now? Yeah, just a bit. I can get right up to the end of the fence there now. Now, what I can do in a minute, when I flip it around, I can actually freehand a little bit in the other direction and I'll get a little bit closer still. The more or uh, well, the less I have to do by hand, the better. Right, turn her on. I'll turn it over once more over the bottom just to make sure it's flat, just in case there was any movement. I don't know if you can see that white thing there, all right, and that piece there, that's wood, but that ain't. Big old chips in there, isn't there? All right, let's just see what that is. I'm just grabbing a braddle to have a poke. Right. That's clearly a piece of plastic. Yeah, that's plastic. All right. There you go, you tell us it's definitely plastic. Is that wood? No, that's plastic as well. That's plastic. So that's plastic. That's plastic. See if any old crap in there. Another piece of plastic there. I grab my light and have a look sideways. I wonder if any shiny bits of metal are showing. So I have I could see sparks while I was cutting it. So I have a grit all that pieces of metal. Pieces of eight. It's pieces of eight. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's plastic. I can't actually physically see anything. I have done videos like this before where you can actually physically see bits of metal. Yeah, there's no bits of metal, but that's plastic, that is, and that's plastic there. Quite big pieces as well. So, you know, it's obviously deliberate. They don't put it there for no reason, do they? It's just, it's just crap, isn't it? And they expect you to cut this stuff with a saw. Hmm, great, isn't it? <laughs> now, let's just remove these fences. Yeah. Get that one out of the way. That one. And hopefully, we can get a little bit closer. Right, I'm going to have to move. I'll put the handle back on. Before it rolls on the floor and get lost. They can have how would you lose that? <laughs> You don't realise without the handle, it's quite hard to actually operate the switch on these, these tip of arrows because you kind of squeeze it there, you see. Right, so I'm going to go this way now. 
I could actually just, uh, uh, how far can we get? Can I get any closer by doing that or not? Let's just release that, see how close, much further we can get. So I get an extra little bit there. It's definitely worth it. Could just clamp them on again to that there, I suppose. All right, to do that, what I'll do is I'll put this down that way, right down to the bottom, turn the cutter so the cut and edge touch the side of your original cut on the side here, just on there. And then use that as a way of referencing where this needs, piece of wood needs to be. And then I'll clamp that back on again. There's only a tiny bit, and that's only a small bit to, to actually cut. So yeah, that's touching there, that's that right. And I'm gonna do the same on the opposite face. So that's there, that's it. So I'll make sure you're on the, the, the extreme of the radius on, on the cutter. Otherwise, well, it's not going to work, is it? Yeah, I'll be in the wrong place. So, I'm not like so, and I'll stick that clamp back on there. I don't need to be that accurate on this piece because it's only a short distance. Make sure it's in the right place. It's moved a little bit, it looks like. Get a couple of taps that way. I've got to be really careful doing this because it's going to move. I don't want to put screws in the top if I can help it. But what it is going to do is going to help me get the majority of that material out. Good half, half that time this time because I don't want to get influenced. <laughs> I can go with the router. Just remove these again. The rest is probably going to be done by hand. Now, I know some people say, why didn't you do it when you built the top? Because I was an idiot. <laughs> I didn't think I was needed. I didn't cross my line maybe, I don't know. Just didn't do it. You know, we're not all perfect, you know. So now what I need to do is remove the rest of that material there. And yes, ideally I would have done it at the time of building the top, but I didn't. So, tough ditty. That it. Right. Oh, dear. <laughs> so how am I going to do that? I've got to chop that out there without making a mess of it. First of all, I need to mark it with my cascamite pencil. And if you're wondering what's on, what I've used to seal this top, I haven't used any acrylic finish or anything like that because I don't think it's good enough for the top. And the reason for that is because it's sticky. Clear varnishes, water-based clear varnishes, have this bit of a tack to them that they're not particularly good for um, this purpose. You really want to, you want to have the actual uh, softness of the actual wooden surface itself, in this case chipboard surface, which is very hard, but it's, um, it has like a smoothness to it anyway. But what I used was, to make this nice and smooth, was cascamite, powdered resin wood glue, which is literally over here. All right. Is my tub of cascabite powdered resin wood glue, which I use to do all my work surfaces. Crazy as it might sound, it actually works really, really well, as 
a finish. You can use it on uh, wood turning and all sorts of stuff as, as a sealer. It takes a bit of time to dry, it's anything, you know, like it would do normally for the glue. So it takes a few hours to dry. But no, no longer than the acrylic finish. But the acrylic finishes don't work for this purpose. It's just no good. This works really, really well. And like I said, I've done all my work surfaces like that. And uh, I'm quite pleased with them. Yeah, it's only chipboard. Yeah, I've done this all on, on the cheap, you see. When this stuff was cheap, it isn't cheap anymore. Particularly now. You know, um, a dowel now in the brick and marche here in France is a, in the green is nearly 20 blooming euros. When I bought this, it was under, it was half that. Everything's so expensive now. <sighs> Right, so I need to mark it. I'm going to need uh, I'll use a square, probably. What square would do? That'll do the job, I think. Oh, no, it won't. It won't work. I came up with a stupid idea, and it won't work. Nope, because it was a stupid idea. I'll just use a rule. Uh, so need that, need that. Could use a saw as well, but I think I'm just going to go in with a chisel. A small mallet. Actually, I'm going to go for the... Four hammer. I'll grab a saw just in case. Yeah, I have to use one. But I don't really want to because as soon as I cut that with a handsaw, I am going to have to sharpen the handsaw. So it might not be a good idea. Let's see. Let's see how we get on. This isn't ideal, but you know, it's just how it is, isn't it? Put some light on the matter. Put the shadows out of the way if I can. <laughs> Including that. Okay. Hopefully you can see that okay, it looks okay to me. So I'm going to line this up with a slot on the side here. You could put a piece of wood in the slot and push the rule up against your piece of wood. I'll show you on this side, it might make more sense. Like that. And then it gives you more of an in-line mark. So you're more in line with the actual slot itself. Oops, the right place we've got there. That's it. I've just got a loaf of the width of the pencil and I've just moved it again. It's not very helpful. There you go. Same on the other side. Make sure you're not influenced by the radius in the corner of the actual uh, router. So you see here what I've been doing. I've been filling the slot, you see, with resin. Literally, um, casket white pad resin wood glue mixed with sawdust. And it works, but it's not the best thing. I've, I've, I've decided I oh, better want an actual... Um, uh, yeah, that I want an actual... Uh, proper insert instead. Seems to make more sense really. The other thing I could use to cut that would be the um, fine multi-tool. I'll tell you what, I'll go and grab that. It might be a better idea. If I can find where I put it, it's not in this box. Oh, it's here. ta -da! There it is. So that might be a better idea. Da, 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 da. Did I find the plug? Yes, I bought this in the UK. I haven't got round to changing the flipping plug. No. These things are stupid, right? Because what they do is they actually reverse the polarity in some cases. If they aren't wired correctly, you'll find the neutral and the um, live is reversed. Most things, it doesn't matter. Some things do. Some electronics definitely matter. Give that a go, shall we? That worked. Like going to the dentist. as well, do you reckon? Ooh, good day, isn't it? Oh, my God. 
so it's not that way around you twit. If you're wondering what blades I'm using, these are just the ones by, oh God, uh, Workman or some Workman tools out of uh, um, Action here in France. And they're actually cheap as chips and they're actually quite, they're not bad at all, nothing wrong with them. And anyone who knows, of, knows about these machines, they're not that great on uh, longevity regarding, I might have to do that, have a cut first before I do that. the same principles those saws I used to cut plasters off in the hospital. Why not bang too hard down because I was making this thinner here you could break the back out. So so far so good. Requires a bit of TLC there doesn't it? What a way to treat the chisel. I like this chisel as well. Good. Like I said, I don't hit too hard. But potentially, you could break the back end. But halfway through the thick, well, actually, less than halfway through the thickness of the board. Da, 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 da. My little Wally's still down here. Thank you, boy. Right, there might be a bit of TLC to do here still. I just feel it. But I'll worry about that in a minute. What I'm going to do first is cut my insert. That's going to be slotted into there. All right. So I can see what length it's got to be. I'm not worried about that at the moment. I'm more worried about its width and its girth. Yeah. It's all about the girth, you know. Yeah, there it is. We have to cut that on the table saw, probably. I'm going to grab some Bernie Hayes. I don't want it too uh, loose, you see. I want it a reasonably tight fit. You could even back cut it a little bit as well, so it sort of wedges in. But you've got to be careful you don't want to chip in the top edge then. So. Right, so what have we got here? Went far for the mark. It's 50... <laughs> Behind me. Could have got a little bit more than a hint there with the mark, can I? It's literally 53 and a half millimetres in width. Tighten up. Yeah, it's pretty on, on the millimetre, isn't it? <laughs> That'll be a bit easier. I'm looking at there, there, I can see that I'm not straight there. But I've got to worry about a lot of this stuff when once I've actually cut my piece out and then just make, you know, clean this up to suit. Maybe a bit of sandpaper even on a board. Maybe, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. Whatever, whatever it takes to, to make it fit. Wally knows, don't you, Wally? Oh, there you go. He just clicked in. There he is. Look at him. Ain't he lovely? He's daddy's boy, he is, I tell you. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, so it's, we've got our width, we've got a girth. Let's go over to the table saw and cut our piece in, in width. Do, 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 do. I've been cutting a lot of wet wood and it's been creating corrosion on my saw t on the bench. Saw table look. There, there, there. Easy sorted. We'll sort that out. Have a piece of wood or a piece of stuff. Piece of chestnut. Water stained chestnut like that. And then we need to set our Do, 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 do. If you're thinking about verniers, when you use your verniers, okay, you've got obviously your external width, 
internal width between those two points there. But then you've got this one here you can use for your depth. So whatever measurement you put in there or here will be mimicked on this depth gauge here, which you can use against your fence. So you can work, you know, use that as a way of setting the, your actual width. Now, I'm going to go slightly wider than what I need, because like I say, I can always make it thinner or narrower, but I can't make it grow, because it's not going to grow anymore because it's dead. Use old, oh god, just use a fish stick on that, will be fine. <laughs> yes, I had my fingers too close to the blade, and yes, I'm leaning over the saw. Oh dear. So I'll cut it to width. I did notice it isn't perfectly straight on that edge. So it might be a bit narrower in the middle because as it's coming along here, I noticed there's a gap forming in the mid between the fence and the piece of wood. So that is not good way to put that a bit wider actually because that's not going to be. Uh, see, that's spot on 53 and a half there, whereas on the end, it's, it's tighter. So you've got to bear that in mind. If you, you know, if you haven't got a straight edge to start with, you're going to create, you know, you're going to not necessarily mimic it. You might actually make it a narrower in the middle. That's pretty much what I've done. It's a good job I actually allowed for for a little bit of indiscrepancy. And the right, Wally. Yeah, he knows. Right. So we have our board. Hopefully, it's going to fit in. Yeah, that's snug. That's pretty. No, that's that's nice and snug there. That'll do. Uh, there's a bit of a uh, thickness changes there a little bit, so I'll, I'll have to start from there. So when I cut it off, I'll cut it off from there. Um, but I'm not ready. It's not ready yet. The slot's not ready. I think what we need to do is, yeah, we need to true that edge up a little bit, which is going to be a bit of a bit of a pain. I don't know how I'm going to do that. You can't really plane chipboard, can you? Well, my bull nose plane go in there. I don't have to re it and probably re-grind it afterwards. A little bull nose plane there, that might might fit in there. We'll see. Ooh, it'll be tight. If it does, I don't think it will actually. No. But what if I treat it as a chisel plane? Blimey, all these all these ideas. There we go. We're gonna slide it out of the way. I know will it fit. <laughs> right, so hopefully I can through that edge up a little bit. Got to be really careful doing this because that'll just jab in without the, the rest of it. See over there, it's definitely jabbing in because it's actually not straight, it's going that way. Yeah, that's a trick. Yeah, this edge. This edge. God, raining again. It's always flipping raining at the moment. It's so much blue and rain. Yeah, that's doing that, that's good. Right, now we need to clean that up a bit at the back edge there. So we just got to go with the chisel. I've got to say, it'd be a lot better if I actually did this when I actually made this station. Is it a station when you actually have a fixed one or does it have to be on wheels to be a station? Oh, I suppose it does really, does it? Now you probably notice there isn't a traditional chop saw in this workshop. I do have traditional chop saws. I have a Metavo and I have a very old um, Draper, uh, professional or expert they called it. I have to admit that thing is a beast. It's 12 inch. It's really accurate as well. You think of that name Draper, you think you'd write a bit of shit, wouldn't you? It's like that brand Ryobi. I don't know if they still do, but they used to do a professional range. Ryobi professional were really good tools. They just, they just didn't um, take off. They just got all like DIY stuff now, haven't they? 
if I've got something, I'm going to have to sharpen this chisel after this. There's going to be all sorts of nasties in this. That's the nice thing about tools that aren't throwaway. You can always put an edge back on. We are living in a throwaway world. You get hand planes now that, are, that have disposable blades. Heaps of rubbish, if you ask me. I think that was uh, Rex Kruger was, uh, he wasn't that keen on the mind. But um, he was uh, demonstrating one. I have to admit, that was crap. Yeah, you know, um, no, Woodbine Wright, he doesn't do any, uh, he don't take any sponsorships, he don't, so he says. Um, you know, it's his prerogative, but I ain't got a problem people sponsoring this channel at all. I've got to eat just like anybody else, you know. And I spend a lot of time on this channel. Most, you know, you might already realise. I put up maybe 12 videos a day, just on this channel. And then I've got my other channels. So, um, I don't want people sponsoring me. Don't be wrong with it. I'm not going to be dishonest though. That's something I won't do. Just because they want, you know, just because just they send you something, you think, oh, well, then, yeah, you're going to have to be nice now. I'll be honest. I'm not going to, regarding any sponsorships, I'm not just going to wave the flag of the company because I've got no interest in that. It's not my, you know, just because somebody sent me something. If it's good, I'll say it's good. If it's shit, I'll say it's shit. It's good. That's how it's got to be, isn't it, you know? You can... Otherwise, as soon as you start thinking, you, you know, you guys and gals start thinking I'm just bigging up a product just because somebody's sent me something, well then you, you're going to ditch me, aren't you? You know? Somebody did actually say in the comments, don't, don't become one of those tool review channels. No, I don't want to, I, I want to on doing what I'm doing. But if somebody offers to send me something to have a look at, I will. You know? I've got no problem with that whatsoever. Provided they don't try and dictate terms. So if there's anyone out there want to send me anything, like a new table saw, <laughs> a big band saw, I don't know, anything, I would be happy to review them and use them in the shop, you know? But if there's problems with it, just like my jet saws and stuff like that, I will say, you know, my jet super saw, which is a 10 inch uh, saw, table saw, has some really bad design flaws. I mean, really bad. You know, one is the rival knife and fence. Uh, not fence, the fence is good. I mean, the um, guard, blade guard, it's the worst thing ever. It's crap. It's really bad design. Flimsy. And we're talking about saw in its time, it's been reasonably expensive. So. Yeah, well, I'm not very impressed with that. I bought it second hand, so I'm not, not too worried. In the UK, I used to have a, um, oh, Christ, was it Wadkin or Spurgeon Startlight? Oh, great, I can't remember. Long, long time ago. Big old cast iron jobby. I couldn't bring it over. It's just too, it's been too expensive to ship it over here. Kind of wish I did now, but. And everything that's free face. I ain't got, I haven't, um, I don't want free face here. I can't warrant it because the thing is, you see, I do a lot of um, eco electric, so for instance, like solar and wind and stuff like that. And um, if I start wanting three phases, uh, you know, it's going to start becoming a bit of a problem regarding powering the machines. So I'm very careful about regarding the wattage of the machines. Like, for instance, my table saw isn't particularly high wattage, it's under two kilowatt, but it has plenty of power because it's belt drive. Same goes with the planer, even it's an older. Multico, it has, uh, you know, um, a relatively small motor really for the, you know, for the power in the machine because yet again it's belt drive and it's an induction motor. You know, it, it works. It works really well. Um, so we use less power as well. So the thing is, quite often when we have these all these machines and you get the biggest machines possible, you use more electricity for a start than you actually need for the job at hand. And everything I do, um, pretty much works perfectly well with the gear that I'm using. So I don't need huge machines. It's not necessary. Now, maybe before a certain political event, and I was making a lot of windows and doors and milling the machine um, wood myself and stuff like that and seasoning it myself, um, maybe that would be a different kettle of fish. Maybe I would have contemplated getting something a lot heftier. Yeah. Or... 
I don't know, table or a big saw, six inch, sixty inch saw or twenty four inch, with a little donkey engine on it or something like that. Maybe I've done that instead. But we do, we look at things. Oh, crikey, look at that drill. It's 24 volt drill. Oh, it's fantastic. It is. Yeah, you've got to carry up the thing. You've got to hold it there when you're up on the ladder and stuff like that. And sometimes all you need is 12 volts. You know, I've got, you know, I tend to have both, but you know. <laughs> we, we get carried away. We get quite easily influenced by uh, marketing. I think that's a great idea. Put a whack in this whopping great, you know, lag screw or something like that. <laughs> If, if you're putting in big old, yeah, how many people put in flipping um, eight inch lag screws into, into oak? Not many, do they? A 12 inch dr screw um, drill will, will happily drive in um, four inch 12s without much problem. Well, any problem at all, to be honest. So we do get a little carried away. That's going to suffice. I think I can probably cut that to length. Uh, clean up this radius on the back edge here. I need to chop that off. Only thing is my uh, <laughs> my Dewalt needs putting back together. And why does it need putting back together? Well, one reason is, is that I just sharpened the blade. So I need to put that back in. Here it is. This is a Saxton blade, ten inch Saxton blade. You can get these in the UK. Unfortunately, since Brexit, you can't get them here anymore. Unfortunately. They do, you can get their, um, their non-professional ones here, but I don't want, I want these. And the reason why I want these is because I've bought a few of them now, and every flipping time they've been really good blades for the money. You know, 60 tooth blade, that was like 25 euros for a 60 tooth blade, Teflon um, coated. 22 euros I was paying for my um, uh, ripping blades in my, in my table saw, and the the tungsten carbide is good quality on them. They last. This is the first time I sharpened this blade. It's been in this saw for... Bloody hell. Croggy. Way over... Way over a year. Maybe even two years. And I hadn't had to... Oh, oh, I've got to remember. It's reverse thread! <laughs> I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> so... I'm just going to tighten that up. Now where is my... Big Allen key gone. Oh, crikey, it was there. And oh, now it's not. Well, that's a no nuisance. See, they won't fit in there. Oh. They're going to not need it. Not by lowering the blade down in a minute. Let's just bring that down. I'll put the guard on as yet. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll lower this down onto. Oh, it's just got the boy in it, so that's annoying. Yeah. I've got a piece of black, piece of wood, I can use that to stop the blade. And I'm going to go hunting for flipping them. Uh, Allen key. There you go. That's it. That's enough. Da -da 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 -da. You see, there's, a, there's an Allen um, screw hole there, and there's also one on the other side of the shaft as well. The usual one, I usually have one in the pot at the back there, but it's disappeared. Don't know why that is. Okay, so far, so good. Let's put this back together before I lose it. It didn't really work that well, not for that purpose. Something else, I've got to sort out the rust on it again. Crikey. Damp is an issue. Right. Should I put the guard back on? <laughs> do you think that's a good idea? I don't really want to operate this saw without the guard on, do I? No. And where's the fitting screw gone? Good point. Where is the screw gone? Oh, my giddy aunt's going to be down there somewhere. All right. It's fiddly to get back on this thing. It's a stupid design, to be honest. If I had to grumble with it, it'd be this. What is it with guards? Why, why are guards always pain in the neck? I wonder if people remove them. Bom, 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 bom. No, yeah, where, 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 where has the screw gone? Where did I put it? Hmm. Is it on the floor? Nope. 
I know what I did. I put it somewhere safe. So it wouldn't lose it. No. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so the little washer has to go on top of the screw first. You see, you can't get your fingers in there. That's the problem. There's no room. There's a tiny little gap there. And how do you twist something when you can't get your actual hand in it? Stupid design. So really, I was, don't know whether or not there's a better way of doing that. There ain't room to have it longer. They you know how to make things flipping difficult, don't they? That's what they do on the French cars, which is Peugeots and stuff like that. Everything's an afterthought. Well, I can remember friends, uh, the Peugeot 405 or something, it was a Peugeot Estate diesel, and um, they had to get to injectors. You could get to three of the injectors, but you couldn't get to, well, no, heat plug, sorry. But there's one you couldn't get to, because you have to remove all the manifold just to get to that flipping injector. Um, took that heat plug, you know, the boogie. There we go. Now, this isn't ideal because I've got no insert in yet, have I? Alright, so, we'll do this. Do the isolator. Alright, so should be okay now. Now, just sharpen that, so hopefully it will be a neat cut, even though there is no space underneath. The blade. It's an ideal thing to do, really, to be honest. I'm doing it anyway. If you don't like it, write a letter. Right, that's without anything behind it. As you see, get a little bit of break out. Not a lot. She a lot better than it was because she sharpened it. And that's chestnut, that is. So now what I can do now is work out its length. It's all about the girth, though, you know. That's what she said. <laughs> right. <laughs> so now we just push it right up hard and then mark it across there. Actually, mark it outside the better. It's got to go that way around. <laughs> so far so good. Now I need to round these two corners off here. They don't need it, don't it? Or I could just go straight to the end, but I think I'll just round them off. And I'll do that over here on the uh, linisher. <laughs> slight round on these edges as well because if at any time it becomes raised and damp and what have you I don't want the piece of wood that I push up against the saw blade hitting that edge there. What's that one? You want to go out now? You had enough? You want to go, you want to go back in the house? There you are look. The other door's open. I'm not coming. No. He's looking at me he is. Oh dear. <laughs> Now, I'm not uh, ed editing this video. Like I say, if you want to skip through, you can always skip through to the end, see the end result. It's definitely worth doing, though. 
and look at its hair, it's a bit of a, it's a bit strange that it's looser hair than it is at the end. But that'll be fine. It'll be right on the night. Oh, we'll get carried away, so make sure there's no sawdust in there. Because there was. Right, it was a bit tight on this end as well. Hopefully, just press it down like so. Not a perfect fit there, but I'll be right. Ooh, I don't know. Do I want to make it a little bit looser than that? All right, where's that chisel? Uh, look at this. I'm going to take off this fraction off this end. That's what I meant to do. Yeah, before you move the saw, always make sure it stops spinning because it's a sharp thing, you know. Flush, pretty much. Another thing is, don't put your fingers in front of the saw while it's still running. There's no blade break on these, see? So don't do what I just did. That was silly of me. That's the thing you see, is if you think about um, accidents, most accidents are caused through you know, a lapse of concentration. So obviously, allow the blade to stop before you put your hands in front of it. Well, I don't think I need any screws in it. Tight enough. If it does start looking like it's going to pop, I'll um, I'll put a couple of screws in it, one on this end, and mm, I'd rather not if I can help it. You could put a couple little blobs of super glue, such as um, this one by Sign uh, Cascomite, which is basically a mite stick, basically for the new miters. But you could put a couple of blobs of that in there, just one that end and maybe one that end. And uh, it won't be enough to actually hold it permanently. If you ever want to get it out, I'll just, yeah, just break free. But it'll be enough to hold it in while you're actually using the saw. That's feeling good there. A little bit high at that end. This, this end is no issues at all. Well, I had to do it by hand. I think they're quite low enough. But like I said, you know, you can always remove material but you can't actually add it very easily that's it that's pretty much this we have a zero clearance we have an insert my radial um, so, so hopefully now it's capable of reducing a better cut. Now that was the cut I had before I sharpened the blade. Let's take that in this old pine. Oh, fur. It's all right now. Much better. Loads better. It's quite an open, it's quite a open grain isn't it so that's before and that is after it's sharpened by hand yeah it's not perfect but there again i don't think it's going to be with this wood this wood's terrible let's have a look at this bit of chestnut that's before i sharpened it that's really rough that is there again that's probably wet when i did that Massive improvement. That's now sharpened. 
using that machine there, but without, oh, can you see it, this one here, right? But with no um, synchronization crap that they put on it, so it doesn't work. I literally just do it by hand, you know. I, use, I put the saw blade on there, and then I just literally pull the saw blade into it. What I think what I'm gonna do is keep this arrangement, mount it on the board, but create like a table for the blade to sit on. I don't need any of this spinny luck. There's no point, I just hold it up to it, spin it around, did it, spin it around. I only sharpen the blade, say, under, well, three or four times before I chuck the blade anyway. So if it starts running a little bit, kind of, some teeth are slightly higher than the others, it doesn't bother me. Not the kind of work that I do. If you didn't find carpentry, do a lot for micro work and stuff like that, you know what I mean? You might think otherwise. Anyway, we have an insert in our radio alarm saw station. And that video now is 53 minutes long. That's how long it took me, all right? <laughs> it might have been a bit quick if I wasn't talking to you. There you go. Anyway, that's how it is, isn't it? So anyway, please beep the old like button and maybe subscribe to the channel, because then you get a warm fatty feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video. Yeah. Toodaloo!